while securing an endpoint is a hard task because there are numerous programs and plugin technologies installed and users have unpredictable patterns how they use and work with the workstation. They constantly install and uninstall stuff, they read emails, they look at movies, they chat, all things that you never do on a server. The server doesn't open Adobe files, the server doesn't serve. The server is made for a specific purpose and there's much much less or even no user interaction on it. So the endpoint is a very dynamic environment which makes it very hard to defend. So to find out what the typical endpoint look like, looks like, we use data from our Secunia personal software inspector. This is a lightweight scanner program for Windows, Windows PCs that identifies insecure programs and plugins. A program is considered insecure if available patches are not installed or if the product is end of life, which means it's no more supported by the vendor. We have more than 3 million uh, people using uh, Secunia PSI and I did some analysis on this data. Secunia PSI is free for personal use, you can download it from our website. What we found is that 50% of the users have more than 66 programs from more than 22 vendors installed. When we first saw these numbers we were astonished. 66 programs, this is a large number and 22 vendors means, as every vendor comes with his own update mechanisms, that we have to master at least 22 different update mechanisms to keep this uh, endpoint secure. So, to go further into the analysis, we built the top 50 software portfolio. Basically, this is a portfolio uh, rep to represent a typical endpoint PC. It is built out of the top 50 most prevalent uh, programs we found thanks to a PSI. So in this top 50 software portfolio we have 26 programs from Microsoft, we have 24 programs from third parties, this is non-Microsoft programs, uh, from a total of 14 different vendors. So each program has at least 24% user share and 8 programs in this top 50 portfolio from 3 vendors have more than 80% user share. So this is truly representative. To give some insight of this top 50 portfolio, I looked at the top 10 most vulnerable programs. On the upper left you see the top 10 third-party programs. We see uh, Adobe Reader, Adobe Flash Player, Sun Java programs with well over 80% usage there and the number of vulnerabilities in the 12 months period is measured in the dozens. The same for the top 10 most vulnerable Microsoft programs in the top 50. Internet Explorer, 100% user share. We have other programs like the .NET Framework or Excel with very high usage shares. And again, number of vulnerabilities in a 12 months period is measured in the dozens. So when we look at the evolution of the number of vulnerabilities affecting a typical PC with the top 50 portfolio, we found that the number of vulnerabilities increased 3.5 times within 3 years. So from about 200 vulnerabilities to almost 800 vulnerabilities from 2007 to 2010. This is an alarming trend. And it is a relevant trend because more than 50% of these vulnerabilities are rated as either highly or extremely critical. Highly or extremely critical means that exploit, exploiting the vulnerability provides the attacker system access to the endpoint. So, we have an alarming trend, we have a relevant trend. The question now is, who is to blame for it? Is it vulnerabilities in the operating system? Is it vulnerabilities in Microsoft programs or is it vulnerabilities in third-party programs? When we dig deeper into the data we found that third-party programs are almost exclusively responsible for this trend. On this plot you see in blue and green the number of Microsoft vulnerabilities and the number of vulnerabilities here in Windows XP operating system increased a bit but stays almost flat compared with a steep rise in the number of third-party program vulnerabilities. Further, 
the change in operating system, say from Windows XP to Windows 7 or Windows Vista, wouldn't change the total vulnerability numbers of the portfolio too much. It would be about 3%. So, how do we do security today? We have parameter protection and antivirus. Those are established technologies. They have limitations, but they are still very much needed and they enjoy very high pr priority in the design of our defense. So everybody has firewalls, proxies, IPS, everybody has antivirus. However, when we look how the threats changed, how the number of vulnerabilities on endpoints changed, controlled and timely patching of all programs, including third-party programs, is needed and it is under-prioritized compared to other technologies today. So, what does it mean to update a typical endpoint PC? So, to keep your PC with the top 50 portfolio fully patched, you have to manage a total of 14 different update mechanisms. You remember, we have 14 different vendors that contribute to this portfolio. So, thereby, we have one update mechanism to patch the operating system and the 26 Microsoft programs. With that, we cover 35% of the vulnerabilities. Then, we need to master a 13 other update mechanism to patch the remaining 24 third-party programs to cover 65% of the vulnerabilities. This is a complex task. So, my question, do you manually update antivirus signatures? Or do you manually run backups? Probably not, because if you run it manually, it will most likely fail when you need it most. So. How do you enumerate and patch third-party programs then? The current state, users and businesses alike still perceive the operating system and Microsoft products to be the primary attack vector. Thereby, we largely ignore third-party programs. Further, the frequency and the complexity of managing a large number of different update mechanisms will almost certainly lead to incomplete patch levels at large. If you see almost 2 billion internet users, cybercriminals will always find a large pool of unpatched victims, victims to attack. So, cybercriminals do not need precious zero-day vulnerabilities. There's no need to buy zero-day vulnerability if you can always find a large pool of unpatched systems and cybercriminals do not need Microsoft vulnerabilities. They use them if they get them, but they can do their business very well without Microsoft vulnerabilities. So we have to modify our model a bit. So the opportunity for cybercriminals is number of hosts times number of vulnerabilities times the complexity to stay secure. Cybercriminals act on the harsh reality, which is that they will always find numerous unpatched programs, especially third-party programs. They know that the organizations easily patch their Microsoft programs because WSUS is free of charge and automates the patching. However, they also know that it is very hard to, to identify and patch third-party vulnerabilities, which represents the weakest link in this chain. From a criminal's perspective, targeting third-party programs is a rewarding path and will remain so for an extended period of time. In the top 50 portfolio, in 2009, we had 286 third-party program vulnerabilities. This is 3.5 times more than Microsoft program vulnerabilities. In the same portfolio, in just the first half of 2010, we had 275 third-party vulnerabilities, which is 4.4 times more than the Microsoft program vulnerabilities. Remember, one exploitable vulnerability is needed or is enough to compromise an endpoint PC. What about the responsibility? So, if you get compromised before a patch is released, you have valid excuses. You can do a lot. You have limited feasible protection only. We have parameter defense, you have antivirus and so on. I showed you in the first part of this talk that cyber criminals are aware of that and they have processes to systematically bypass these technologies with a high success rate. 
However, after the patch is released and before you install the patch, if you get compromised during that period, then you have a very hard time to find an excuse. Because root cause protection was available, but not implemented. After the patch is installed, there is no more need for an excuse. Because whatever number of zero variants cybercriminals create, the patch neutralized the root cause. So this brings me to the most important slide of this talk. A patch provides better protection than thousands of signatures because it eliminates the root cause. If you remember the life cycle, how malware is created with thousands and thousands of serial variants that make a very hard time for every signature based detection system, which challenges all heuristics and other systems. We don't need that if we have a patch. The patch eliminates the root cause. When a vulnerability is patched, no matter how many variants you make, you cannot exploit the vulnerability anymore. So, to conclude, users and businesses alike still perceive the operating system and Microsoft products to be the primary attack vector, thereby largely ignoring third-party programs. Basically, we lock the front door while the back door remains widely, widely open. Cybercriminals are very well aware of that and exploit this. Patching should be prioritized as a primary measure, given the change threat landscape, as we have seen, how cybercriminals create their creations and uh, how the number of vulnerabilities exploded, affecting a third party third party programs. Then we need tools for the controlled identification and timely patching of all programs, including third party programs, to keep up with the changed threat levels. So much from my side, thank you very much for your attention. 